This is lesson 7.1, solving trigonometric equations graphically. In this lesson, the focus is on using uh, graphing technology like Desmos in order to solve these equations. Let's get started. It says trigonometric equations can be solved over a restricted domain. So we've, we've done this a little bit before where we can look at um, domains like between 0 and 2 pi. Or what we can do is we can um, solve over the set of real numbers and determine the general solutions. So what we're going to see is that uh, trig functions, because they are periodic and they just keep rolling like this, sometimes there's so many solutions that we just have to express it generally. All right. So in order to do this, we're going to use two different methods. And we've looked at two different ways that we can graph on Desmos technology um, a little bit earlier in the year. But now we're going to look at it a little bit more explicitly. So the first way that we're going to do right here is it says we're going to take each side of the equation and enter it as a separate function. Okay, So that's what we'll look at uh, yeah, for method one. So in this method, each side of the equations are entered as separate functions, and the solution is the y, sorry, is the x coordinate of the points of intersection. So what I mean that we're going to go and do is we are going to put into Desmos or perhaps whatever graphing technology you're doing, we're going to go y is equal to 5 sine of x for this equation. And we're putting, going to put the other side in as another function, 3 cosine of x minus 1. Okay, So let's go over to Desmos. We'll put in these two functions. We'll do it just for this domain. And then again, we're going to look at those x coordinates, Okay, where they intersect. So let's go over to Desmos. All right, so you'll see that I've put in the two functions. We have 5 sine of x, and that notice that that is the red function right here. And we have 3 cosine of x minus 1. I've also taken the liberty of controlling for our domain. So if you go into the graph settings right here, you'll notice that I've made um, our domain go from 0 to 2 pi. I chose increments of pi over 2, um, just so we could kind of have a, an idea of what's going on. You don't necessarily have to pick that. And, and then I left the y values with um, what the graph uh, originally had right here. Okay? And so what I'm trying to do is I'm just trying to see where these two graphs intersect. And where they intersect, again, I'm only caring about the x coordinate. All right? So if we look at this intersection point right here, you'll notice that it intersects at 0 0.368 comma 1.77. Again, I don't need to worry about the y coordinate. So one of my answers is going to be maybe to two decimal places, we'd say 0.37. And if we look at the other place where they intersect, right here, we have our second solution, which is 3.85 to two decimal places. Okay, So that's one way that we can use graphing technology. You put both sides of the equation in um, as two separate functions like this, and then find where they intersect. All right, So let's go back over to our lesson. You'll see that we have our two answers just like so. Okay, So that's one strategy that you can do in order to solve an equation. Now let's go and look at the same equation and a different way that we can do it. And so method two says that we are going to um, rearrange and set equal to zero. So we're going to take this equation like so and we will rearrange it such that it is set equal to zero. So I'm going to move everything on the right hand side to the left hand side. So that would turn this equation now into being 5 sine of x minus 3 cosine of x plus 1 is equal to zero right now. And so this one's going to be a little bit different because what we're going to do, it says, is in this method, each of the terms are moved to one side of the equation so that zero is on the one side. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at where this function crosses the x-axis. And what you'll see when we go over to Desmos in a second is that our answers will be the same as what we had up here when we found that we had 0 0.37 and 3.85. Alright, so let's head over to Desmos and take a look. Alright, so you'll notice that I put in my uh, new function like this when I've moved everything over to one side of the equation. So just the 3 cosine of x was moved over so it became negative. And then the negative 1 was moved over so it became a positive 1. So we have that all right there. We only have one function, of course. And what we're just trying to do is we're trying to find the 0. So we're trying to find when it crosses the x-axis. You'll notice that we get the exact same solution. 0 0.37 to two decimal places and zero, sorry, 3.85 to two decimal places. Okay, So that's the second way that we can go and do this. All right, so let's head back over to our lesson, and we'll finish it off. So to recap, uh, you'll notice that we got the exact same solutions um, doing either of the methods. And so again, method one was when we went and took our equation, and we created two different functions for it, one with the left-hand side and one with the right-hand side. And method two was when we set everything equal to zero, and we found where our graph crossed the x-axis. Okay, So that gives you two different strategies. Depending on the question, one might be easier than the other. That completes this very, very short lesson. Go give um, some of those questions uh, a try, and um, I think you'll see uh, how easy it is. All right.
That concludes this lesson.